Welcome to Gospel Preaching, a presentation of Gospel Time Ministries Incorporated. And I'm Dave Rigg, coming your way from my home, located about oh, six miles north of Albion, Illinois. The scripture for today's message comes from the book of Proverbs. It's chapter 20 and verse 19. Whoever goes about slandering reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with a simple babbler. Would you pause just a moment with me for a word of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask now for your blessing on the reading of the Holy Word. I pray for your guidance through the Holy Spirit that I might preach this message today in the way that you want it to be spoken, and that all who watch this message might get from it exactly what you want him or her to receive. This I pray in Jesus' name, and amen. Once upon a time, there were four preachers who liked to meet every Monday morning at the local coffee shop. One day, one of them said, you know, we encourage the people in our churches to confess their sins and their weaknesses to one another and to pray for each other. Well, I think we really can't ask them to do that if we ourselves are not willing to set an example. I think we should share our weaknesses, our sins, with each other here today. Well, they agreed that this was probably a good idea, and that's what they decided to do. So the first pastor confessed, Well, there are times when I just can't resist. I go to an adult bookstore and rent a triple X rated video. The second preacher confessed, well, I've got a drinking problem, guys. I keep a bottle of whiskey in my office desk, and I take several nips during the day. The third preacher confessed, Well, I've got a problem with gambling. You see, guys, I like to play the lottery every week, and sometimes I'll put on a disguise and go to the riverboat to do some gambling. Now, they all had their eyes on that fourth preacher, and they said, as he delayed saying anything, what about you? One pastor said, we confess to our secret sins, and you really need to do the same. So finally he said, all right, I'll tell you what my secret sin is. I like to gossip, and I can hardly wait to get out of here. <laughs> well... The verse that I read to you, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 19, again, I'll read it to you. Whoever goes about slandering reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with a simple babbler. Now, that verse is about a sin that many people commit. In fact, I would go so far as to say we all do it. I, I am confident that every single person has been guilty of being a slanderer at least once, if not many, many times. The word slandering there is exactly the same thing as gossiping. It's slandering other people by telling bad things about someone to somebody else. Now, the most common places where you will get involved in gossiping would be, first of all, on the telephone or on your cell phone. That's probably the most popular uh, means of gossiping. But there are also two other places I would like to mention. First of all, coffee shops. Guys like to meet there and sometimes gossip about things. And the other place I would mention is beauty shops. That's right, beauty shops, where women often gather. And you can bet a lot of gossiping goes on there. Did you folks know that there are numerous Bible verses that condemn gossiping? In fact, we are commanded, as it said there in Proverbs 20, 19, not to associate with people who are gossips. A person who listens to gossip is also condemned in Scripture. The Bible says, we should either walk away when someone wants to gossip 
or rebuke them for what they are gossiping about another person. Well, gossip does not just mean doing the talking. It can also mean listening to someone else who is doing the gossiping. Listening to it is just as much a part of gossiping as to speak gossiping. Proverbs 17.4 says, An evildoer gives heed to false lips. A liar listens eagerly to a spiteful tongue. Wouldn't you say that someone who is gossiping has a spiteful tongue? Gossiping is clearly intended to harm the image of the person who is being spoken of. Colossians chapter 3 verse 8 and James chapter 4 verse 11, I'm not going to take time to read them to you today, but those two verses command us not to slander one another. When you are tempted, my friends, to say something about someone, ask yourself this question. Will it hurt the person being talked about? James 4, 7 says, So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. So you know that it is a sin to gossip. And to know it and then to go ahead and do it, it's a sin, my friends. Today I'm going to tell you the story about two people who attended worship services together at a church. Mildred Clausen was a 62-year-old woman, and she had never, ever been married. She was known as the town gossip. When she went to the beauty shop each week, Mildred told everything she had heard about people or what she had seen people doing. The other person I want to tell you about is a guy by the name of George Maxwell. George was a 65-year-old bachelor, and he served as the treasurer of this church where Mildred also went to church. And we'll get more of that story a little bit later on. Here's point number one of my message to you today. Point number one, gossip comes in several forms. Gossip comes in several forms. Now, as I've said just a little, little while ago, gossip is nothing more than slander. It is character assassination. What does God promise for those people who slander other people? Psalm 101.5 says, Whoever secretly slanders his neighbor, him I will destroy. Now that's pretty strong words, friends. Proverbs 10.18, Whoever hides hatred has lying lips, and whoever spreads slander is a fool. So do you know somebody who likes to slander other people and gossip? That person, God's word says, is a fool. Well, the question is, have you ever done that? My well, guess is you probably had to admit you have. Gossip is also tail-bearing, tail-bearing. Proverbs 18.8. 8. The words of a tail-bearer are like tasty trifles, and they go down into the inmost body. Have you ever noticed how when perhaps you're listening to some gossip about someone, it, believe it or not, and whether we like to admit it or not, it kind of makes us feel good to hear something bad about somebody else for a change. Proverbs 20 and 19. He who goes about as a tale-bearer reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with one who flatters with his lips. Proverbs 11.13, a talebearer reveals secrets, but he who is a faithful spirit conceals a matter. Proverbs 26.20, 20, where there is no wood, the fire goes out, and where there is no talebearer, strife ceases. So you see, if, if you get some gossip from somebody and then you turn around and tell it to somebody else, it's like a fire that starts to build. Proverbs 16, 28, a perverse man sows strife, and a whisperer separates the best of friends. So gossip, tail-bearing, can separate friends. Gossip is also being a busybody, a busybody. 1 Peter 4, 15, but let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or a busybody in other people's matters. 
See, 1 Peter 4.15 says, don't be a busybody. Gossiping is also backbiting. Psalm 15.1, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy place? He who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. Now, friends, after listening to all those verses, do you still think that gossiping is not a sin? Well, let's get back to our story of the town gossip, Mildred. One day, Mildred started a nasty rumor going around town that George Maxwell, the church treasurer, was in fact a drunkard. You see, she told that to all of her lady friends at the beauty shop. And you can imagine that that's not where it stopped. It didn't take long for Mildred's story to spread all over that little town. Eventually, the story got to the church pastor, and he was concerned about what was being said about a member of his church, especially the treasurer of the church. And we'll get more of that story a little bit later on, but let's move on to point number two. Gossip is harmful. Gossip is harmful. Leviticus 19, beginning at verse 16, you shall not go about as a talebearer among your peoples, nor shall you take a stand against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your brother in your heart. You shall surely rebuke your neighbor and not bear sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Gossip not only is hateful, but gossip causes you to be a prideful and envious person. In other words, if you are a gossiper, it can cause you to be prideful and envious. Romans 1, 29 and 30. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness, they are whisperers backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. 2 Corinthians 12, 20. For I fear, lest when I come, I shall not find you such as I wish, and that I shall be found by you such as you do not wish, lest there be contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, backbitings, whisperings, conceits, and tumults. Gossip also can cause a person to have idleness in his or her life. 1 Timothy 5.11. Now listen to this, ladies. But refuse the younger widows, for when they have begun to grow wanton against Christ, they desire to marry, having condemnation because they have cast off their first faith. And besides, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but also gossips and busybodies saying things which they ought not. 2 Thessalonians 3.11 For we hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner, not working at all, but are busybodies. Have you ever noticed that someone who likes to spend a lot of time of Gossiping really is not a very active and busy person. Back to our story of the town gossip. What did Mildred base her story that George Maxwell was a drunkard on? Well, she claimed that she saw George's pickup truck parked right in front of the tavern. And she claimed that that truck was parked there all evening. Mildred, you see, did not take time to ask George why his truck was parked there. She just assumed George spent all evening in that tavern drinking, and therefore he had to have a drinking problem. Mildred thought it was awful to have a guy like George holding a position of authority in her church, and she told everybody in town that would listen what she had seen. More of that story later, but let's move on to the final point, point three. 
Gossiping can be prevented. Gossiping can be prevented. First, friends, the first thing to do to prevent you from being a gossip is to love your neighbor. Leviticus 19.18, you shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Matthew twenty-two thirty-eight. 38, this is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Second thing you can do, cleanse your heart and put away sin. 1 Peter 2, 1, therefore laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. Friends, there's no doubt about it. Gossiping is evil speaking. James 4, 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify you heart, your hearts, you double-minded. And third, a good way to stay away from gossiping is just stay busy. Listen to 2 Thessalonians 3.11. For we hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner, not working at all, but are busybodies. Again, as I said a few seconds ago, someone who spends a lot of time gossiping usually doesn't find that person to be very busy. Fourth, control your tongue. That's the biggest thing you can do to stop gossiping is control your tongue. Proverbs 12, beginning at seven, verse 17. He who speaks truth declares righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. The truthful lip shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil, but counselors of peace have joy. No grave trouble will overtake the righteous, but the wicked shall be filled with evil. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully are his delight. Another point and I, I said point number three was the last one, but it's, it's not. There is a fourth point today, and that's unusual for me. Point four, gossip can come back to bite us. Gossiping can come back to bite us. Galatians 6, 7, do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Romans 2, 5 and 6, but in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourselves wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds. Hmm. In the book of Job, chapter 34, verse 11, for he repays man according to his work and makes man to find a reward according to his ways. Psalm 62, 12. Also to you, O Lord, belongs mercy, for you render to each one according to his work. Jeremiah 17.10 I, the Lord, search the heart, I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Well, after all this, some people would say, I didn't know what I do is gossip. Well, listen to this. Proverbs 24, 12. If you say, surely we did not know this, does not he who weighs the hearts consider it? He who keeps your soul, does he not know it? And will he not render to each man according to his deeds? Well, let's see how the story of the town gossip ends. Eventually, someone told George what Mildred was spreading all around town about him. The question is, what was George going to do? Well, he didn't get angry. He didn't try to explain why his truck was parked there in front of the tavern that evening. He didn't try to deny that it was his pickup parked at the tavern. So what did George do? Are you ready for this? A week later, George parked his pickup truck in front of Mildred's house and he left it parked there all night. Mm. In closing, friends, gossip is something that God hates because it hurts people. It damages reputations. It assassinates their character. 
It causes friendships to break up, and it can even sometimes destroy marriages. Remember, eventually it will all come back on the person who said those words of gossip. So the next time someone gossips to you, tell them you're going to tell the person about what he or she is saying about him or her. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Oh, yes, friends. We are saved by grace, no doubt about that. But I believe this very clearly. When we get to heaven, who are, who are we going to stand before is the question. And the answer, of course, is Jesus. And we, my friends, are going to have to answer for what we have done in this life. So, have you been guilty of gossiping? Friends, it is a sin, isn't it? Jesus doesn't like it, does he? And I think we need to stop it, don't you? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask for your blessing on this message you have given me to preach today. And Lord, I know that you can send it out a long, long way through the technology that we have today. And I pray, Lord, that as people watch it, each man, each woman, each boy, each girl will get from this message today what you have intended. So I leave it now in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for watching this presentation of gospel preaching here on Facebook, also on YouTube. And uh, tell other people about it, especially maybe you know someone who is a gossip and he or she needs to watch this message, okay? And uh, in the meantime, if the Lord's willing, may God richly bless you. Hope to be back with you again this same time next week.